welcome back, Devil Sniper here, and today I'm bringing you episode number three of our career mode with West Ham United. So we are at the beginning of the season, two games into my managerial career, and I've got to say, the result against Spurs, I will take. The one point I will take. The point against Crystal Palace, I'm really disappointed with because I felt we had the momentum, we had the pressure, we just didn't capitalise on the momentum we had, and uh, at the end of the day, I'll take a point. It's not a loss, but I would have. I do feel that's... That is two points dropped. A huge thank you to the support at the bowling. You guys, home and away, have been fantastic. The support behind the team has been immense, and it really is greatly appreciated. So we're going to today's game at home against Southampton. We're forced to make a couple of changes, and I've brought back Andy Carroll. He is 100% fit, 100% fit. The physio team I have is second to none. Tompkins, unfortunately, is out. He's got a slight knock, but he is fit enough to be on the bench, and I don't really want to risk him. So I put Kiate into the centre-back role. Davis with a beautiful cross, and Kiate with the header into his own net, unfortunately. But I do feel this is a foul. The centre-forward is literally mounting Kiate from the rear, going through his back doors, forcing the issue. Kiate couldn't get the header that he wanted, which was up and over or just wide. And unfortunately, he does go into his own goal. The referee decision there is a little bit ludicrous, in my opinion, as Downing does a great job defensively there. Puts the ball into Carl Jenkinson. He looks to distribute it, but Tadic just goes straight through him. And as you can see, Jenkinson is not impressed with that tackle. That could be a serious injury if he had missed time that anymore. It's lucky that he didn't go through the back of him. But it is a disgraceful tackle. Great defensive work by Down in a distribution. But as you can see, Cole looks up, goes for the pass. And that is a bad, bad tackle. He lands heavily on his shoulder. That could have popped it out, but thankfully it doesn't. Jarvis looking for Lencia in the box. Great defensive header from Southampton. Comes out to Jay Rodriguez, who's being closed down by Creswell. Creswell feeds the ball into Noble. Noble looking to get forward. Has the shot. It's deflected into Valencia. Valencia into Creswell. And Creswell has put that wide. Unbelievable miss there by the young man Creswell. Great play by Noble to have the shot. The deflection comes to Valencia. And the instinctiveness of Valencia just to play Cresswell in was absolutely fantastic but Downing does not look impressed with the young man unfortunately but it's Cork into Long for Southampton moving forward into Jay Rodriguez Long's found himself in a lot of space and he's punished the West Ham back for the poor defending poor marking poor communication it looks like Winston Reid had made had, had tracked his man across Kiate had gone out and left Sean Long or Shane Long in so much time and space it's really disappointing but Downing taking the game to the Saints pings off a shot and it's just high and wide that was so close great play there by Downing but it looks like Tompkins is coming on for Andy Carroll that could be a slight injury we'll have to find out if that's a serious injury with Andy Carroll but Tompkins has come on Kiate has moved forward into his, his, his homely role which is in the centre of the park but at this moment in time it's not good for West Ham they're trailing 2-0 there is signs of life but they've really got a up their game and straight away Valencia and Jarvis are coming off for West Ham Zarati and Sacco are coming on for West Ham to inject some pace up top and uh, hopefully uh, work out an equaliser but Zarati straight away cuts inside and he's put it wide from his left foot great play by Zarati to make the space and time for himself but he's just put that wide that is that has got to go down as an awful miss like Creswell in the first half West Ham have had a couple of good opportunities they haven't taken them if they don't take them they could be looking at a defeat. But the ball again with Zarati. Zarati goes around the Saints defender with ease. Fires the shot off. A little bit of confusion in the Saints box. But unfortunately, Zarati again just doesn't take his opportunity. Kresas with the ball. Looking to get forward. The referee's blowing that full-time whistle. The game is going to end. West Ham nil. Southampton 2. Southampton only had two shots on target. But they took their opportunities. Unlike West Ham. So with a result to one side, I can't explain how good Mark Noble is and how important the lad is to our team, squad and club. His vision is pure class and his ball retention and distribution is on another level. We just need to add goals to his game. But having said that, he ran the show today from the middle of the park. His game stats were totally class and show why we are playing Quite well, regardless of our points total. Now, I will have to speak to Mr. Hodgson and see if he needs to go to Specsavers, as Noble is England class without a shadow of a doubt. His game statistics, 90 minutes played, completed five tackles from seven, and his pass completion rate was sensational. He made 25 passes, completing 21. He wasn't booked. He had a great game, regardless of the 2-0 defeat. We just need to be a little bit sharper in front of the goal. So, that's it with a, a couple of great chances, and obviously, Crezzers in that first half, with a, a scintillating opportunity, we just couldn't take it. So now we move on to the final part of the transfer window. We're going to get the transfer window out of the way, done and dusted. We're not making any transfers. As you know, the contract I signed was not 
to bring in any new players. If I do bring anyone in, it's going to have to be youth. Hence why the club gave me such a big investment in a, in a youth scout. Hopefully he'll come back with some sensational players. We sent him out to Brazil to hopefully find a new Eduardo. If you know who Eduardo is, let me know in that comment section below because we all would love to have an Eduardo back at the club. But now it's time for the Daily Jaffa. Number one for news, number one for sport. The Daily Jaffa still at its competitive 35 pence. Andy Carroll out for eight months. Adrian after number one jersey. West Ham fans are fearing that Locke might have sidelined Andy Carroll for a full eight months. When Locke was approached about the injury, he stated in a very clear manner, are you having a bubble? The big man is fine. It will be playing against Charlton in the cup. Can I ask where the media get this utter rubbish from. It was quite clear Locke wasn't impressed with the rumour about Andy Carroll. During the aftermatch interview with Sky Sports, Locke was approached about some land that is valued at £10 million that was given to him by the West Ham board. He didn't care to comment on such matters, but it begs the question for the West Ham fans, is Locke at the Hammers for all the right reasons. It would also appear from an inside source at West Ham that the Spanish goalkeeper Adran is wanting the number one jersey and it is rumoured that he has been calling manager Locke over the last week to try and sort the situation but Locke has put his foot down with a clear no which has unsettled the Spanish keeper who is hoping to open contract negotiations in the coming months. It hasn't been an easy start for Locke with results not going his way and rumours coming from the club that players aren't currently happy. I want to sign. Winston Reid has confirmed he wants to sign a new contract with West Ham United after speaking to new manager Locke. Reid stated after the Saints game, Locke has impressed me with his training methods and his ambition. It would be silly to leave the fans, friends and club. So straight into the cup game, as you can see Andy Carroll is playing. Yes, a few of the boys who are not getting regular uh, sort of time on the pitch are going to be having a game in the cup. But Andy Carroll is playing, he will get a full 90 minutes and hopefully we can do the business. As you can see we are 2-1 up. Carroll has scored, which is nice to see him on the score sheet back. He's 100% fit, so there's nothing to worry about. We're going to move into the squad report, see how the boys are developing, how they're doing. As you can see, Jenkinson has gone up plus one. Tompkins has gone up plus one. His injury against Palace wasn't as, uh, as bad as I first feared, because uh, obviously we bought him on against uh, Southampton quite early on in the game, to be fair. Reedy still had a few issues with Reedy. We, we saw ironing him out. Hopefully today we will uh, offer him a new contract. I know what he wants, and uh, we'll, we'll be negotiating on that today to hopefully uh, sign him long-term to the club. We're looking for an additional two years on his current contract. But as you can see, the boys are doing quite well. They're growing at a steady rate, which I'm very, very pleased to see. I like to see the, the, the lads develop. You know, they're putting in a, a lot of hard work in training. They're really adapting to my, my way of training, to my new training ethics and the way I want training to be complete. So it's really, really good. As you can see, Zalati, he needs to take his opportunities. He's growing and doing really well statistically. But, you know, he's got to take his opportunities in front of goal. Those two big opportunities against the Saints, you know, they're game changers at the end of the day. Same as, you know, young Crezers. You know, he's 24 and I call him young. He's still young in football terms. But young Crezers had a great opportunity in that first half. And he's got to, you know, take that opportunity. You know, I know he's not renowned for scoring, but he's got to take it. Obviously, Downing was a little bit aggrieved. But, uh, you know, that's what I like to see. You know, I want to see passion within my players. It was, uh, it was all left on the pitch. There's no hard feelings between the two lads. So there's nothing to worry about there. And uh, everything is fine. But, you know, Reese Burke's doing quite well. Seen him in a couple of reserve team games. Same with Chambers. Doing quite well. Really impressing me. You know, they're looking to break into the first team. They're a little bit off it at the moment. But if they keep the way they're playing in the reserve team, um, they might be able to get a cup game. Or, you know, we might give them a run out here and there. But we'll just have to wait and see. But they are doing well. So I'm really happy with the academy at this moment in time. Um... We're developing the academy. Obviously, we're going to be rebuilding around the academy. And uh, obviously, we spent a lot of money on a big scout. So hopefully, he can bring back some talent. But uh, we would definitely be investing in the actual academy facilities as well as the lads in the academy. It's very important that we bring through some homegrown talent, in my personal opinion. But there we go. We're going to move on to some contract negotiations. And of course, we are going to go and contact Reedy. It does say refuse contract. I do not know why because the, everyone accepted their contract. I've had no email from Winston Reed to say he's declined the contract. But nonetheless, we do know he does want to sign. You would have seen that in a local rag. The Daily Jaffa that he uh, he does want to sign, and uh, obviously I've been speaking to him on the phone quite quite a bit. So uh, as you can see, we're going to offer him a two-year deal at this moment in time, and uh, probably at the end of next summer, 
or beginning of next season. We might contact him again to get a contact a contract extension. I didn't want to chance my luck with him. He wants a two-year deal. We're going to give him the two-year deal at the end of the day. But uh, if you could bang a thumbs up on this video, I'd be really, really chuffed. And uh, it, it's not for me, not for me in any way, shape, or form. It'll be for my youngest daughter, Daniela, who actually does the typing on the Daily Jaffa and on the man of the match cards that you see within the videos. It's uh, it's a way of teaching her spellings, you know, typing skills and memory skills because basically I dictate to her once what I want her to type. She types it out. And uh, obviously any grammatical errors or grammar errors and spelling errors, uh, it, just one of those things. I don't change them because it's not what I want to do. It's a way of just, you know, getting her to learn. I point out the mistakes afterwards and I've done the video. So the, the errors that go in there, they're real. They're not put in there on purpose. They're real because she's learning and she's only five. So it would mean a great deal. Anyway, that's enough for me. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I will catch you tomorrow. And then we're going to start going into probably uh, every other day uploads because I think the episodes are going to need to be a little bit longer with the add-ons that I have and the stuff that I want to do within the actual career mode. So anyway, hopefully you're still enjoying this. Till then, I will catch you later. I used to dream about cars and